Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about a brand new QNAP. Now I've talked about quite a few brand new QNAPs in the last couple of months. They've kind of really unveiled a lot of their big big key devices that are going to be with us for the next few years and of all of the devices I've talked about so far this is very much the one in the wheelhouse for you business users. It's a desktop solution arriving in technically four and six bays although sort of eight and six bays we'll have to see um but ultimately this is a couple of nas devices that if you're looking for enterprise level storage look no further now if you're a home user you're probably not going to push the boundaries of a couple of powerhouse nas's that we talk about today and it's also worth highlighting that when i use the word powerhouse if you look at any of my other videos you know that means i'm talking about a xeon processor and i know there's a lot of you out there that feel that xeon versus intel core processors and of course your amd your ryzen's and stuff like that there's an area of utilization for all of these processors but in the case of these two NASs, we are going to talk about something rather beefy. We are talking about, finally, the TS-686 and the TS-886. These are the four and six hard drives, by at the very least, storage devices for business. They're utilizing a slight tweaking and modernization of the 82 series chassis that we saw in the four and the six and the eight bay uh, from a few years ago. And it is a three-tier storage system with dedicated hard drive base, dedicated SATA SSD base, and dedicated NVMe storage base inside. Now, say storage, what you've got there is three different storage media types that can either be used as independent storage or a tiered storage system for, frankly, insane capabilities of performance. So... Let's talk about these devices. Let's talk about what we know so far. Well, first and foremost, the processor. I've already alluded to it. It is a Xeon processor. It's the D1602 and the D1622. In the case of these, it is um, you're either going to be going for the dual core or the quad core processor. I'm sure somewhere on that side of the screen, there's going to be a lot of information there. But the dual core processor um, is the Intel D1602, and it is a 2.5 um, gigahertz processor per core. And each one of those cores has got four threads, and each one of those cores can be burst up to 3.2 gigahertz in performance. A huge amount of performance. Normally, at this part in the video, I would point to a result from CPU Benchmark giving you some huge score. But unfortunately, this CPU is not listed on CPU Benchmark and hopefully it will be upgraded, uh, updated in future videos. But all the other websites I've looked at, and I tend to err towards CPU Benchmark for any processor and their score to keep things uniform. But we are looking at a ridiculously high-end CPU there. Now, the four core processor, again, four threads per core is a 2.6 gigahertz processor per core that can be upgraded uh, sorry burst up to 3.2 gigahertz as well and again that um all um both of those cpus that are featured in both of those devices are xeon based and they're part of the hewitt lake family um they are not graphically embedded like most xeon processors unlike a core like an i357 it does not have uh, embedded graphics inside. These are designed for hyperscale file environments, not for graphical manipulation. They can, of course, be used in virtualization. But because they don't have that dedicated GPU element, they will be using raw graphical capabilities to perform those actions. So do bear in mind that the industries that this is going to be geared towards are far more towards fast file throughput and hence the three-tier storage system. But that processor does open the door to several things. For example, it is going to be utilizing DDR4 memory. And that is 2133 uh, megahertz DDR4 memory and um, UDIM memory, the full scale um, memory modules there. Now, I don't know what the default is going to be on this. I imagine it will start with 8 or 16 by default on the lower TS686 model if it arrives with that dual core processor. But this CPU and no doubt the four slots of DDR4 memory inside allow up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. A huge amount of scalability and upgradability in terms of your memory and definitely something beautiful to scale with that processor that we've just talked about. Now, 
On top of that, the device arrives with a lot of scale and upgradability. First and foremost, we talk about the hard drive. Whether you go for the TS686 with its four hard drive bays or the 886 with its six hard drive bays, each one of those bays will support the very latest SATA hard drive. So you're talking your 16 TB Seagate Iron Wolf hard drives, which is an enormous amount of storage. But as I'm sure the graphics on screen have shown you, it does mean you can also utilize dedicated bays on the front there for SATA SSDs. Now, there is an area of contention here when I was looking at a lot of my notes, and I'm not 100%, I'm 99% certain those bays on the front are SATA SSDs, which you can inject SATA SSDs, no trays needed, just, or the trays are already there, pop them inside, click load, uh, click screwless design, slot them inside, and then those SATA drives can be utilized for SSD caching or raw storage. But it's not just that. Inside, you've also got two dedicated NVMe SSD bays, and these are PCIe Gen 3 times 4 which means you can use the very latest SSDs in the NVMe series. We are talking like your Seagate 510s, both in Nitro as well as in Iron Wolf. So you have got ridiculously fast-acting SSD capabilities inside. Now again, you can use these for caching or raw storage, or you can use the Q-tier system to create a three-tier storage system. So that means more frequently accessed files to buffering and caching, all happening in the background while you're accessing your files. Now, by default, it arrives with minimum 2.5 GBE ports. That is four 2.5 GBE LAN ports. None of your one GBE here with a link aggregated capability of 10 gigabit utilizing all four ports in a supported switch. But on top of that, don't get me wrong, that is great to hear that they've moved away from 1GBE by default. But if you do want to embrace the likes of 10GBE, 25GBE, 40GBE, or fiber channeling, you can take advantage of the two PCIe upgrade slots there on the rear. With the PCIe slots of Gen 3 times 8 that means you can upgrade with some of the latest QM2 cards, as well as the FC series of fiber channel cards, and even adapting other network interface cards as well. Now, I don't know about the power and capability of this device. Uh, the previous generation of NASs that utilize this chassis arrive with variable PSU options, and you could install graphics cards. Now, we have seen Xeon-based NASs from QNAP that support graphics cards, I can't confirm um, whether this device will be utilizing that capability. And again, there is a whole live stream from QNAP on this very device. Um, I believe in the next 24 hours, either just before or just after this video, based on the time of publication, that will give you much, much more uh, current information on this device. So I recommend you check that out. Hopefully I'll update the description with a link to that video. It's both in English and in Taiwanese. But that will allow you to know if you can upgrade this device with a graphical component in case you do want to take advantage of that. That CPU is still going to be great for things like surveillance and QBR Pro and taking advantage of the full business suite of applications from QNAP. And again, whether that's just file stuff with QFile, QSearch, QFiling and more, or the more enterprisey field stuff like virtualization uh, and a lot of the container applications there in the background and a huge array of third-party application support as well. I mean, again, apart from that, that's everything we know in the terms of hardware with this device, and I'm sure there'll be some things that slip the net. First and foremost, we don't know too much about the internals. We can see the externals of this chassis and the fact that it utilizes that LCD panel and LEDs to give us lots of lighting there, but more information with regard to the PSU that's going to be utilized, power consumption and noise, we just don't know at this time. But fingers crossed, we are going to see this device coming very, very soon because when it comes to business level desktop NASs, QNAP have been, I would say, um, quite faithful to a lot of their high end desktop devices. Generally, when it comes to the home devices, you know, your twos and your fours with Celeron processors, they get a new family uh, integration. They, you know, they update the range every two to three years. But when it comes to the business top end stuff, generally they are remain for quite a long time so this device is going to be a long-term investment for the future and no doubt will release at the same time as the existing range of xeon powered nazis but what do you guys think maybe this device and its support of qts 4.4.2 for you guys is going to be a natural progression for your business from an existing qnap nas you've got there 
or if you're thinking of dipping your toe into the world of network attached storage, is this device for you. We will be doing a fuller overview of QTS 4.4.2 very, very soon. Unfortunately, not utilizing this device, obviously, but I look forward to showing you guys what exactly that can do for you. And we're curious about this device and will it support that great ZFS file system that QNUM have got out there. But we will find out more later on. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Do visit the links in the description to both NAS Compares, Span.com, and of course more information as we learn about the new range of QNAT NASs overall. Click like if you enjoyed this. Click subscribe to learn more. And I'll see you next time.